Priscilla didn't even consider the accident itself, the low-slung car that had drifted sideways into them. All she considered was her two-year-old Rex's cries of pain. The car that had pushed her aside slid over his legs and hips, pinning him under it. She pulled under his arms, but he could not be moved. He was pressed too tightly beneath the car. Two others ran to see if they could help, but she gave them little thought. Turning her back to the car, she bent her knees until she could grasp it underneath, and with a scream of effort, she heaved it up so others could pull Rex out. Could she really have lifted a 2,000-pound car? These things happen. The facts do not lie. And so our belief in her ability is of no concern. If there is truth here, it is that we do not know our own human capacity. Unlike an animal that can run only so fast and so far before it collapses, we seem to have reservoirs of potential that are secret, even unknown to us. Our limits are of a different sort. One limit is how long we live. The more time we focus on one thing, the less time we have to spend on other things. Another is a limit on our focus and intent. The more time and effort we expend on one project, the less remains to attend to other efforts. But these are limits only on what we do, not on what we accomplish. The tighter limits are on what we want to accomplish, what we so value that we are willing to commit time and effort to gain it. This is time and effort that will no longer be available for other pursuits. This presentation is guidance for living and guidance for learning. Your key is what you want to accomplish and whether you are willing to commit what it will take to accomplish it. The U.S. Olympic team had an incredibly talented wrestler. He had gone through both high school and three years of college without losing a dual meet match and went on to likewise have a perfect record in the Olympic tournament. After this, he quit wrestling as a sport. He had a record that put him at the top and did not consider continuation to add that much more value. He went on to do other things because that was where the value was to him. Many could challenge his decision as loss of opportunity, but they were not the ones who had to put forth the effort and commitment. They were not the ones who could truly value what the young man had put forth to accomplish what he had done. It was his sense of value that had been the basis for further commitment, and he decided to redirect his efforts. In general, we choose to pursue those things that come most easily to us. Where we use our natural talents and abilities, the investment costs us less for gaining what we value. This is not wrong. It is recognition that the more we invest in one thing, the less remains for others. The important fact is that you are the one who is learning to be an adult, the one who is making the investment based on what you believe to be your future potentials. What others, parents and teachers alike, have to offer is their vision of your potentials and their own concern for your future. Where they give the best they can, they are still not the ultimate decision makers. You are growing into adulthood, where you are more and more the one who must decide where you direct your time and your efforts. And among those things that guide you, be ever mindful that you do not really know the limits of what you can accomplish. Like everyone else, you will make the decisions that seem best in your understanding of your own wants and needs. There are times that you will be right, and times that your efforts do not achieve what you thought they should. You will either accomplish, or you will learn. If I were to give practical recommendation, it would be to do your testing now while you are still rapidly growing and learning. When you become an adult, the cost of change and the efforts of learning seem to increase.